um, in terms of laying out survey locations at a site. So I mentioned the fact that, that arthropods, they're kind of patchily distributed, so we need to do a fairly large number of surveys to actually get some signal out of all of that noise. Um, and <clears throat> so we want to distribute our surveys across you know, our site. And when we're doing a scientific study, um, we want there to be some kind of, we want to be getting a representative sense of arthropod abundance on a given day, which means we want to be using a somewhat systematic uh, method of choosing where we're going to survey things. Um, that is to say, we don't want to just, like, the, the extreme example would be to say, oh, there's an awesome bug, I'm going to survey this tree, right? Because if you always did that, then your, your total estimate would be biased upwards that there are more bugs per square leaf, square inch of leaf than there really are. Um, and we want to kind of, in theory, kind of get sort of whatever representative vegetation you might have at your site. Um, now that said, there are logistical realities and constraints with respect to, you know, we can't just lay down a random grid of points and just expect that that's going to work out very, very nicely. So what we have is kind of a hybrid measure. And so um, I, I showed you that example in the slide before, just kind of distributing across your site you know, maybe these circles. So, and I know you can't quite see this here, but just imagine, okay, here at the Botanical Garden, there's actually this, there's a trail that goes along here, and actually there's a creek right down here, we'll see it later, um, and the trail goes on back on the other side, and it comes back, it's like a three quarter mile loop or a half mile loop or something. So what we've chosen to do here at the Botanical, Botanical Garden is just kind of distribute um, somewhat subjectively survey circles, that is sets of, a circle would be a set of five surveys, and we'll just say, okay, this would be, a, there's trees around here for starters, so there's something to survey. So we'll call this the center of one circle. And then we wanna have some space in between the next one, maybe 25 yards or more. And then the next place where, okay, there's some trees, there's some stuff around here. We'll call this the, the center of the next circle, et cetera. So you might, depending on what kind of paths or you know where vegetation is, you might just kind of distribute a couple of survey circles subjectively based on what you have to work with. But then within a survey circle, this is where we want to be systematic, right? So what we've done is we've said, okay, well this is going to be the center point. This is our the circle we've chosen. We're going to now um, choose four additional survey locations um, within each circle in addition to that center one. And it's basically going to be, they're going to be ideally in just in the four cardinal directions around that um, at least five meters away. Okay. And we don't have to be, get out the, you know, the tape measure and measure that out. Right. But you know, so seven paces or something like that, right. For most people. And we don't have to be exact about the cardinal directions either. And again, you might be in a spot where maybe it's along a line of meadow and a bunch of woods and there is nothing in this direction that's fine um, but what we want to do is basically pick um, our additional survey trees to the extent possible imagining this layout and then we can adjust and adapt to reality as needed so the the idea is okay from right here let's say i know that north is i tried to look at a map last night it's confusing here because we're on a it's like this way yeah. ish yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah right? It, okay, so um, what you'd want to do is just say, okay, from here, I'm just going to walk five meters in this direction. Once I've gotten five meters, now I'm looking for whatever foliage is within, I don't know, say two meters on either side of me, the closest, and so maybe I would end up at this tree here. And so, okay, so that would be one, and then just do the same thing, walking in each, in each direction at right angles from this line, from the center point, okay? So... This circle will consist of these five. And you're always looking for trees? And you're always looking for trees. So okay. what are we surveying? Right. Um, so we are interested in trees and shrubs, arthropods on trees and shrubs. So we're not worried about herbaceous vegetation down here. That's kind of a whole different, both a whole different insect fauna, but also it's a whole different set of birds and, and fewer species of birds that are worrying about uh, herbaceous vegetation down there. 
So we're really, from the bird perspective, we're thinking about um, birds foraging in trees and shrubs. So we're looking to survey trees and shrubs. And also to kind of make it worth our while, if a particular shrub has really tiny leaves, um, because our standardized level of effort is, is going to be a 50 leaf survey. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But if, if a particular shrub just ha happens to have really tiny leaves, surveying 50 really tiny leaves um, and just stopping there uh, is kind of not worth our effort. Like it probably wasn't enough area to actually get a good sample to begin with. So we have a minimum um, leaf size sample, which is basically about two inches. So if our tree or shrub has leaves that are at least two inches long on average, then we'll call it good. So this one, you know, there's some that are smaller, but that's okay. A lot of these are um, certainly longer than two, two inches. And so this would be uh, suitable. Now I mentioned the, the survey is 50 leaf survey. And we'll, we'll be doing those in a moment. Um, but if you get to a place and you have some scraggly little sapling that only has 30 leaves, then um, that by itself can't be your survey, right? Like if you get, you've walked five meters and you have this scraggly sapling, you might have to keep walking. Alternatively, if there are a bunch of scraggly saplings nearby that are all the same tree species, it's okay to combine multiple saplings together to get your 50 leaves, um, you know, especially if they're all right in that same location, that's fine as long as they're same species. We don't want to be lumping two different tree species into our same survey. Does that make sense? Um, and let's see. Aren't you biasing against taller trees by only measuring what you can physically measure? We are absolutely, we're characterizing, that's a great question. So we are characterizing arthropod abundance down at ground level. And, um, I'm not going to say that it's identical to the arthropods that are found further up. There have been some studies in some locations that have actually used a canopy crane at a couple sites to do that analysis. In some cases they do find differences, in some cases they don't. Um, and it would, be, it would be a great thing to actually figure out for particular places. Um, but you know, the constraints of what we could realistically do, we are we are um, recognizing that what we are characterizing is basically, you know, understory level tree mm -hmm. shrub arthropod abundance. But that's a great point. And also, mm -hmm. the that primarily in the understory. And yeah, you, and sure. We can modify the, the types of things we look at. You know, the other thing we've done, I wasn't going to talk about it in this workshop. The other thing we've done um, to get it the higher up stuff is actually putting out frass traps. So these are things that catch mm -hmm. caterpillar poo, basically. Um, and that's another really fun activity. I mean, that could be a really cool side project to build on. And in fact, we've done that both here at the Botanical Garden, as well as at Prairie Ridge, where we're both doing the ground level surveys and we're doing the frass trap. And for example, for the caterpillar pattern, we get the same seasonality shown in both of those signals. Um, the kind of frass trap monitoring, uh, uh, well, I'm happy to talk more about frass trap monitoring at lunch if people are interested. Um, it could be a little more time intensive and ideally you have access to a balance and things like that to weigh how much frass you're getting. So if we have kids involved, is there um, a height minimum for kids to participate in this so we have any standardization for eye level? Uh, <coughs> So that would be tricky. So. Yeah, I, I guess we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in a, a minute when we actually get into doing the surveys. Um, so I would say the visual surveys that we'll talk about, and there are two kinds: visual surveys and beach sheet surveys. Visual surveys, I would say, are not appropriate for kids under 11. Like, it takes a little bit of patience. We'll we'll talk about it more okay. in a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, the beach sheet surveys, I think, are potentially amenable to the kids um, doing stuff. But so what I'd like to do right now actually is just, oh, I forgot my flagging. But um, maybe uh, for, let me check the time. Well, uh, no, we'll, we'll think we'll skip it. What we'll do now actually is just move on to the survey. Um, so let me, let me demonstrate, I just want to demonstrate for you guys uh, a visual survey. And so we've, 
We've got our site laid out, and actually I should have mentioned, and I forgot to bring the flagging down here with me, but uh, you know, once you've chosen your, like this is gonna be a survey branch, this is gonna be a survey branch, et cetera, really helpful to maybe put flagging on it or some, you know, whatever kind of markers are allowed. Uh, the flagging that we typically put out, we actually, you know, we keep track. We number our, our surveys uh, both by the, the circle number that, you know, the group of surveys that it's in. So this might be circle five, and then we have A, B, C, D, and E. Those five surveys are, are lettered. And so the flagging might say we're at 5A. And so that we always, you know, that's something we're recording when we uh, do our surveys, right? But so putting flagging out. But so let's say, you know, this is one of our marked branches. And so a, a visual survey is, again, we're, we're trying to standardize the area we're surveying. So it's a, you want to survey a 50 leaf area. And that includes the petioles of the, that connect the leaf to the, the twig or the branch. It includes this, the twigs and stems. So it's anything that might be on this uh, 50 leaf area. Now where is this 50 leaf area? That's actually gonna require you to figure out before you do the survey. Um, typically, I mean, I mean, in theory, you could just start and say, okay, here's leaf one. I'm looking around. Uh, here's, you know, two, three, four, five. But then, when you stop and you find something, and you're like, oh wait, what is that? He's got uh, his wings or tent, like, okay, I gotta write this down. And then you've already forgotten what leaf number you were on, right? So I find it's really useful to actually count out the area in advance and just visually have a sense of my 50 leaves are gonna span this branch, that branch, and then the part of that one. That part, if, if, and different people's brains work in different ways. So you can do what's best for you. But you know, often I kind of, I actually just count out 50 leaves. You want them to be adjacent, contiguous leaves. In theory, so you don't want to be, again, swayed if in your counting, you're counting this area, and then you happen to notice a cool beetle <laughs> over here that's not contiguous. Resist the temptation to like, <laughs> oh, yeah, and these four, five over here, right? We, we don't want to, um, to bias our, our results upward in that way. But you can still take that as a learning opportunity and show it with, you know, whoever you're with, but um, it shouldn't be included in the survey. And so you might count out, okay, here are 50, 50 leaves, um, and um, once you've got your sense of that area, then you go about and you're carefully, so you wanna be inspecting both sides, and so here I've got a little um, leaf hopper nymph, he just flew away, um, and, and writing down as you go what you see. And so, and actually, so I should actually bring this out. So Can I'm gonna- For the um, leaf bites that you see? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. So little holes in the leaf, mm -hmm. um, uh, which we call herbivory. So that's a sign that something has been eating here. Uh, we actually are going to record that later on, but it's not something that, um, so I guess there's, there's maybe two parts or three parts to the survey. One is actually recording live bugs that you find. So, you know, molts, dead skins, dead bugs, spider webs, don't care, right? It's bird, living bird food um, that's greater than two millimeters. So again, the tiny stuff, don't want to record it. Don't care. Um, it's collectively greater than two millimeters. <laughs> you find a lot of aphids. <laughs> um, if all of, if each of them is is less than two millimeters, then then we don't care. Um, now, there's, uh, you'll see on the, if you have a data sheet, and hopefully eventually this will be, there will be a little ruler in the app itself that pops up, but there's a, there's a ruler on the bottom of the data sheet if you're doing paper data sheets, and um, getting people to uh, estimate um, lengths is, is going to be part of the process as well, that they can consistently you know, know like how big two millimeters is, and actually anything you see, you're going to want to record what its length is from the top of its head to the end of its abdomen or the end of its butt, right? So we don't care about antennae. We don't care about, you know, a spider that's got, you know, the daddy long legs was this big. <laughs> you know, we only care about the head and abdomen, head to abdomen length, basically. Uh, and we're in re recording that in millimeters. So uh, only living things, um, not a sign that something was there in the past. Um, 
and only things larger than two millimeters. And, okay, I'm talking and not opening my app here. Um, so no aphids. And, well, some aphids actually can get pretty large. So, oh, okay. uh, I mean, I've seen aphids that are five or six millimeters. A lot are, you know, getting into the two or three range. If it's two millimeters, you know, you can count it. So, um, but the really tiny stuff, we're not gonna sweat. And, and as you'll see um, later on, we can easily weed out that stuff when we're playing with the data. Even you yourselves will be able to do that. Um, okay. Um, some nice birds. Okay, so uh, on the data sheet and on the smartphone app, uh, when you do a survey, so uh, you know the date and time are some obvious things you want to record. The temperature obviously can have a big impact on what kind of uh, insect activity uh, we observe, right? So on the app, it's just kind of like 10 degree. We don't ask you to accurately do this, but you know, say it's 60 degrees right now. Um, and on the data sheet, you can just write down where you are, your, your site name, et cetera. Here, we're at the Botanical Garden. Um, now, every site has a site password. That's something, if you decide to start up a Caterpillar's Count site, then you'll, you'll, you know, negotiate, you can't do that without my approval. So I'll help you set that up. We'll decide what your password should be, something easy for people to remember, um, probably. But um, the password for the Botanical Garden, if you're using an app, happens to be all lowercase NCBG, North Carolina Botanical Garden, exclamation mark. Um, so without that, without that password, you can't actually submit. Um, data. Um, on the top of your data sheet, there's a space to say whether you're doing a visual survey or a beat sheet survey. On the app, that's one of the first things that you can uh, select under survey type. Uh, I already mentioned, so survey circle, I'm going to pretend we're, we'll call it one, we're actually going to go do some real surveys in a moment. But, um, uh, and actually, you know what? Uh, well, if you guys are all following along here, that's fine. But what I'd like you to do is, uh, if, you have, if you're doing this in your app, below the survey selection under notes, that would be where you kind of describe anything um, maybe un atypical or unusual about the day in general or the surveys, uh, the survey trees. So an example would be, um, let's say last night, it was a huge storm, it rained all night long, all the leaves are super wet. Um, I would say that would be atypical, that would be something that would affect bugs we see, and I would write something just like wet leaves rained a lot last night in the notes, for example. Um, or tree fell and knocked over my survey tree, so I'm actually doing this on a different survey tree than the one from last night. You know, those kinds of things, right? After you got the tree off of you. Of After you get the tree <laughs> off of you, then you can do that. Um, what I'd like everyone who's actually following along with their own app to do right now in the notes is type delete. That would be very helpful to me. <laughs> 37 of the same report. Exactly. Um, okay, so so usually, and I got ahead of myself, I guess, but um, usually I come up to the survey location, I enter all this info, where I am, um, you know, the date and time, the, the survey location, and I might even, uh, if I know it, enter the tree species that I'm surveying, which you can see is a couple steps down below, and it's, something, it's a, a thing in the, um, on the data sheet as well. And so this is a dogwood. Um, this is a flowering dogwood. So, you know, if I know it, that's great. Um, it may be that you don't know, you know you're not an expert in tree identification, and that's fine too. It, um, the best case scenario is that maybe there's someone who also works at your site who, down the road, can come by and visit at a convenient time all of your flag trees and we can get a list together. But the other option is, um, as you'll see in a moment, um, we're gonna be taking photos of the leaves, et cetera. Um, and so I may be able to help you out, uh, et cetera. So that's something we can crowdsource. It's, you know, ultimately we wanna get that right. But as long as our survey is, is flagged, there's no hurry on it, right? We can always fill that in later. You could use the Leaf Snap app as well. Yes, that's great. And so I have there's there are a couple apps for um, tree and leaf identification. Um, one is called Leaf Snap, 
and one is called Flora Quest. Flora Quest was actually developed by UNC's um, Alan Weekly, who's kind of the botanical expert of the entire southeastern U.S. He's wrote he wrote the book that is literally yeah. this thick, but it all fits on your smartphone app. Now both of the Leaf Snap and the Flora Quest cost some money, like five to seven dollars. Um, there are also some free tree identification <coughs> uh, resources. All of those things are linked on our website, um, so you can you can see what those are. And again, that's another layer you can always build on. It's like getting into tree identification. But it's not a requisite for actually carrying out the survey. Although, you know, we, we hope in the long run, as long as you have these things flagged, that we can come back and figure it out eventually. Um, so I'm gonna put dogwood. I'm actually gonna type delete, just to be, again, <laughs> safe that this gets deleted later on. Then I'm gonna do my survey, okay? My survey, like I said, I'm gonna count out this area. It might not be that I count out all 50 leaves, but maybe I'll just count out like, okay, this branch has 18 leaves on it right here. And that's a number I can remember. Then I'll inspect it. Then I'll go on to the next set. Again, it's whatever works for you, but we wanna, we wanna just make sure we're doing that same number of leaves every time. Um, now, different, so as I, as I see things on this app here, okay, I saw a leaf hopper. So I'm gonna click, there's a little button next to arthropod order on the app. Um, you click new and a new page pops up and you get a drop down. What did I see? I saw um, a leaf hopper and it was only two millimeters long. There was just one of them. If there are some other interesting notes about that particular arthropod, then I might record that. Just, just to put for length, just two, or do you have to put millimeters? And just the number, just so the two. Number. So it knows it's okay. gonna be in millimeters. Um, and yeah, and that, again, that's another part of uh, uh, sort of training things, so think, training people to think in millimeters. Um, if you want to, it gives you an option to take a photo for every bug you see. That's great. Um, now, especially for the little things, and especially for the crappy camera that's in my particular phone, it's not <laughs> worth like taking a photo of a two millimeter long leaf hopper. Um, what I would um, highly suggest though is for any caterpillar you see, like go ahead and take a photo of that. That because you know it's caterpillars count, they count. Um, and, but, the, but, but ultimately the arthropod photo is, is optional. You can submit that record, you don't have to take a photo. In many cases I wouldn't bother just um, both because it's going to be that same beetle, like you've seen 50 of that kind of beetle before at this point, so who cares, it's another one. Um, but if it's something really cool, you have that option, and that, that photo will get linked to that record in our database. So it just goes to your database? It goes to the database. Okay. Um, that's right, so it doesn't, it will not be on your phone that you get to look at later. If you want that, you'll have to open up your camera and take another one separately. If you wanted to share it with iNaturalist, for example, you'd have to do that. You'd have to do it separately. Now, ultimately, um, the goal is to have all of these photos go straight to iNaturalist, but that's not working yet. But that is definitely a goal. Um, you know, and that, that allows, right, for other people to identify the species, all these cool things yeah. we're seeing, et cetera. So that's definitely um, on the, um, I don't even know if it's on the horizon, but it's in my head. Okay. That's, uh, my head is up in the clouds. Um, okay. Uh, but so anyway, I've entered my arthropod, I hit save. And for those of you following along, where, where are you finally <coughs> save? At the very bottom. So after, so let's see. Uh, oh, okay. The count was just one. You have to put the count in two. There we go. Okay. So okay. Once, you, once you put your keypad away, then you should see at the bottom a little save button. And then uh, you'll be back to the main page and you'll see a little card has popped up with that record, right? It's a little cartoon of whatever bug that was. Where's, the, where's that? Oh, there. right there, okay. Got yep. it. And you can keep, but you can keep adding new That's bugs. Cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm done. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hitting that new button for as many new things as you see, and it'll keep adding new little tabs um, down below for all those records. So now I've finished my 50 leaf survey, and um, 
<laughs> Before I submit, I need to do two things. So one, someone brought up, uh, do we mention, we notice that this leaf has been severely chomped. Like that seems interesting and relevant, right? That a bug was here. Um, so this is this herbivory score. And so we have these categories of herbivory. Um, we want to, for the 50 leaf section that we surveyed, so maybe on an adjacent branch, there's a totally different level of herbivory. We want to characterize the part we just surveyed, right? We want to say, okay, of those 50 leaves, what percent of the leaf area was impacted by herbivores? Are, if, and so the way to think about this is in your head, try to lump all of the holes that are scattered across all these leaves together into contiguous, a big hole. How, mu how many leaves worth of holes would all of those holes together make? You just surveyed 50 leaves. So if there were two and a half leaves worth of holes of an average leaf, <laughs> that would be 5%, right? And that's kind of our first cutoff. Was there more or less than 5% herbivory? Um, if, there were, if it was really hit hard, and you take all these sections that are missing and put them together and you have more than five leaves worth of holes, that's 10%, right? That would be, that would be unusual, okay? We see it, but most, I'd say most trees are probably in this trace category of zero to 5%. Most leaves have something, but it's less than, or most branches have less than 5%. But um, that's the way to think about it, is aggregating all of those leaf holes together. Since we're going for sampling efforts per area, um, is there an issue with if we count um, if, if there's a, if there's 20 or 40 percent or reverie or something like that? Should we count more leaves because if one if one yeah leaves, right like, you know, right so that's a great that's a great question okay so the question was if there's lots of herbivory then you know what should be a large leaf might actually be a small leaf area and so if we sample 50 small you know chomped leaves that's not very much and so yeah so what I would say. We have that minimum um, size, but I guess um, this, and this is actually getting to this last piece, which is um, there's a leaf photo. With, in the app, this is required. And this is because we do want to have a sense of what is that total leaf area that we surveyed. And some trees have small leaves. You might have a big leaf magnolia that's a survey tree that has these giant leaves, right? And 50 big leaf magnolia leaves is a lot different uh, leaf area than 50 little dogwood leaves or something. So, so at the end of this app, um, you take a leaf photo and let me, see, I'm gonna borrow your clipboard for just a moment. Um, I don't think this was in your folders, but this is something that's available, that's on our website. All it is, is a blank sheet of paper, but there's a box on the sheet of paper at the bottom. And this is a box of known area. This box is 25 square centimeters. <laughs> So <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to, after we're done with our survey, maybe not from our survey tree because we're going to come back and repeatedly survey it, but from the same tree species nearby if that's possible, we want to get pick a leaf <clears throat> that represents kind of the average leaf size of those 50 leaves that we surveyed. And then we want to take a photo that includes both the leaf and our scale box. So that later on we can actually calculate the area from that photo, multiply times 50, and know what how much area you, you surveyed. That's not in the app. The calculation of the area is not in the app, right? But but the photo part is. This with the box is not right. So you would need to print out the sheet and maybe laminate it, and have that with you so that you can take a photo of that leaf. The leaf with the box. The leaf with the box, I'm sorry, yeah. But. And that's the one that we submit on here. And that's what gets submitted at the bottom here. Yep. Yeah, that's where something got submitted. Yeah, so at the very bottom it says leaf photo. Um, now, if you're doing this with data sheets, um, obviously it's not required because no one can make you do something. Um, in, in this case, it won't submit unless you take that photo. But you can record data on a data sheet without taking a photo. Um, what we've been doing is just, you know, we have a digital camera or, or a phone, you could be doing it on your phone but not in the app, um, and taking photos of leaves. And then on our web, um, web data entry site, you can upload those photos later. So yeah. do you have to do this every time or just the first time you come to the survey site? It's good to do it at least a couple times 
especially early because if you start out at the beginning of the season and the leaves are still getting larger now you know at some point you know maybe we're at that point now by late may in north carolina the leaf leaf size is not going to change for the rest of the season um and so um i'm not too worried about getting those estimate those the accurate measures but it still won't let you submit and so you can just snap a photo if you want. You don't have to be all, take time and be all. And then put notes, like size, unnoted in previous surveys. That's right. You could write notes. that in the notes that, okay. um, well, it, it'll be obvious from the photo. It, you know, if you just didn't bother to take it with this and you just snapped it. Um, we're also thinking about other ways to do this leaf photo. Maybe like just putting little round, um, just a round sticker on a leaf so that you can just easily snap yeah. it. Um, and so those kinds of things, but that's not in here uh, as of yet. Um, the last thing to note about this whole leaf area and average leaf size deal is that a lot of times the leaf size is pretty variable on a branch, right? And it's less important when I say that we do, we do a survey and it's a 50 leaf survey, it's less important that um, it's exactly 50 leaves, it's more important that the average photo or the average leaf that you take a photo of at the end, when you multiply that times 50, is basically the area you covered. And so what I might do, and this dogwood is not a good example because the leaves are actually pretty consistent, but here, here are two that are quite small, right? So as I'm counting out my 50 leaf area, I might just say, okay, that's one leaf. I'm saying one, two, three, and I can lump a bunch of small leaves together. If there happened to be one giant leaf, I might say, I'll count that one as two leaves, four or five, right? So again, ultimately, when I, at the end, have, this is my average leaf. When I multiply it times 50, that's more or less the area I covered. And the exact, whether I got that exact number right or wrong is gonna depend on how variable the leaves are in size. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. So yeah, so we don't have to be precise about that part of it, as long as we're kind of estimating that overall um, area that we searched. Um, okay, that is a visual survey, and um, we're gonna have you guys do some practice ones in a moment. Um, we have some fake bugs on some of the leaves here that are actually just pen markings. But, um, <laughs> but before we do that, I guess one other thing to highlight. So I guess first of all, you didn't even see me do, I didn't bore you with doing a full 50 leaf survey, even though it probably would have only taken a minute um, but, you know, you want to be careful to examine every leaf surface, both top and bottom. As you're doing it, you're trying not to disturb the other part of the branch that you're going to yeah. get to later, right? Because you don't want things to fly away or drop off. Um, so you're trying to be careful. And, and, so, and for this reason, um, this is why I would say that this is probably not suitable for kids under age 11 or so. I don't know what the actual benchmark is and maybe some of you have really patient and mature you know five-year-olds but um, you know at some level at some age you I don't think you can reliably count on the kid to actually count 50 leaves and to actually inspect every surface okay so that's why I say that 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 um, and maybe even middle school is um, an overestimation of middle schoolers patience I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ultimately kind of leave that to people's own judgment about, you know, their, the people they work with. But this is the reason why we have another alternative survey method. And so the advantage of the visual survey is you don't, you don't need anything, right? You could not have a, you could just come, you have print out a data sheet and it's freely available. You don't need any equipment. You can just go to a plant and you can do a survey. It costs nothing. You don't need anything. So that's the advantage of that. So hopefully that is really the barrier there for participation is pretty low. Um, the alternative is doing a beat sheet survey and these are you know our homemade beat sheets. We have instructions on how to make these beat sheets um, on our website and it basically costs five bucks per beat sheet. Um, but we also actually have beat sheets for all of you to take home with you today. Oh, just a question about the app. You don't, you know, oh, if, you try, if you try to get out of this you don't want to do it. You know, basically submit without the photo, it won't let you, but is there, oh, you, is there uh, a way to get, I haven't found a way to back out of it. Like not yeah, I think it. you have to just literally like, clo so like cool. close the whole app by, you know, Xing out of it. Um, if you, if your, your home button or your, 
and then double click on that. But if you've put delete in the site notes, I'm fine with you submitting it. I can eliminate all of those in one keystroke, more or less. So if you wanted to snap a random photo and submit it, or just to see what happens, you can do that. Okay, so this is a beat sheet. Um, again, like at, at Lowe's, I buy these 10 foot pieces of um, molding and cut them into four pieces. It makes two beat sheets. I will screw, drill a hole, cut out a two by two foot piece of sheet and staple it on here. Um, and so the idea of a beat sheet, I guess we should have bought got these sticks a little bit, but usually there's sticks lying around here. Oh, that's, that's much better. You don't want to get a rotten stick that has a bark that's going to fall off. You'll probably figure that out. But yeah, a stick like half to three quarters of an inch in diameter, if it's not rotten, works great. So the idea here, instead of all of that painstaking counting of leaves, um, carefully turning things over, is it's much more immediate and fun and accessible, especially for kids, <laughs> is you hold it under a branch, you whack it 10 times. Ten That's our standardization. <laughs> Everyone can remember 10 times, ten right? Yeah, ten so hard. Um, the hard part is what takes calibration, right? So uh, you, don't want, you, want, you don't want people like kind of doing this. You need it to be, I guess what I would say is vigorous but not destructive. Right? So, and part of this depends on the, part of it depends on the tree species because some of them have really sensitive um, you know, petioles and things that it'll break off and other ones just require a bit more. But um, <clears throat> so there's so there's two things. One is remembering to hit it ten times. But then the, the second thing is we we actually need to record. So then at that point we're looking, and now it's just a matter of seeing things that are on a white sheet. It tends to be much simpler and straightforward. Much more likely to catch cryptic caterpillars and things like that. Um, and so we would enter them in the app the exact same way, right? Um, the one extra thing we do with a beat sheet survey um, is enter the total number of leaves that we surveyed that were kind of poised above that beat sheet. So I might hold the, after I'm done, I hit it, I look, I record all the things I saw, beetles, whatever. <coughs> when I'm done, I'm going to shake it out, and then I just put it back up and kind of see, okay, how many leaves actually were over this that I hit? And it's not always going to be 50, and depending on the tree species, it might be 15 if they're really large leaves, or five big leaf magnolia leaves, or it might be, you know, 80 sweet gum leaves that are all kind of in these big bunches or something. Um, so there's a space in the app to enter that. Um, question? Are there, are there any data comparing methods to see if, they're, if they are indeed comparable methods? Uh, on our website, there are not right now, but we've been doing that as part of, as part of our research. We have been doing those comparisons. Um, and so broadly, we've been uh, finding that when you do a beat sheet, you're much less likely to record flies, for example, right? Because, of course, they're <laughs> going to fly away when they get disturbed. Um, and so there are a few orders that the likelihood of observing shifts a little bit. Um, but as long as we know what kind of survey was done, you know, there are ways that we can work with those data. And again, we want to you know, try to, in an effort to make this accessible, you know, we want to give people the option of doing whatever works best um, for their site. Yeah, and do question. you have to be consistent with whatever survey method you do? Yes, that great site? question. So, um, I, would, I would very much appreciate it if you were consistent um, with a single survey method. Um, that is, one week you don't do all beachy surveys, and next week you do all visual surveys. If you're interested, interested and curious about this question of how comparable, you could even turn that into an exercise of like, how, you know, how does our picture of what bugs are around us depend on the survey method? Then I would encourage you to do both if you have the, the time and the manpower. And in fact, that's what we're doing here at Botanical Garden in Prairie Ridge. At every place, we do a visual survey. And then after we're done with that visual survey, Actually, we don't do it on the same branch because we've just kind of disturbed it, but on an adjacent branch of that same, you know, the same location, then we do a beach sheet survey. So we can do that comparison. Um, yeah. I saw you dump the beach sheet. I know you didn't get any bugs, but do you place the bugs back on the I don't place the bugs back. So, sorry guys, like they, they have to find their way back or, um, yeah, so I don't worry about that. It, I, if, it's a, if, it's a, if it's a caterpillar, <laughs> 
I, I won't shake him out. A caterpillar, I'll put back. So we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some um, some surveys. Um, here, I just want to have folks do some practice visual surveys. We have some, like I said, just some fake bug marking like things uh, to, to see uh, if you can notice them. Um, and then we'll actually go to some of our real botanical garden survey locations and do some real surveys. So I like to get a group, um, let's see, let me remember the tree. So here's a white oak right here. There's a beak right here. And then, again, the tree I was just at is a dogwood. Uh, we've got this. This? No. Black gum. Black gum. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, this black gum. Uh, so, so go ahead and just find one of these trees I'm pointing out. Actually, I think even this, this branch as well as this branch. Is that too? Uh, and just, you know, pretend to do a... So actually count out an area of 50 leaves. Practice that part first. And then start inspecting them and just see if you find anything unusual. Um, and I'm happy to. Uh, uh, three ants that were uh, three millimeters long each, and one ant that was five millimeters long. You'd have to add two <coughs> cards, right? So the first card, you could say, it, you know, it's an ant, length is three, and the count was three. The fact that you also have another ant, but the fact that it's a different size means that you can't enter it in that uh, first card. So you would submit that one, then hit new, and say, I saw another ant. And this one has a length of five and uh, a count of one. Um, now, if, let's say, you stumble upon a mother load of ants, there's like 30 ants, and like half of them are two, and half of them are three, and there's... Um, I don't want, I don't expect people to like break down, you know, 30 ants by size. Like you can just say, I'm going to call these three millimeter ants and there's 35 of them and we'll call it good. Um, so you don't have to parse it out. But if they're like radically different in size, then they should each, you know, the different size should each get its own uh, card uh, for entry. That's a great question. Okay, right now we're going to, um, we're going to split into two groups. And um, let's see, we'll have the nine of you on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, go with Sarah and Tara. And they're going to take you to one of our survey trees. And then the other nine of us are going to go to another one where we'll actually do, um, this will be data that actually gets submitted and collected Ooh. at some of our survey locations. So, and hopefully we'll see some real, um, some real insects. Before we go, if you want to see, a, they actually found a real caterpillar on the white oak back here uh, in a really sneaky spot, too. Um, if you want to take a look at that before you split up, yes. you can come. Over. Survey circles, th this funnel is actually one of these frass traps for um, getting caterpillar frass. It's not, uh, it's not actually loaded with filter paper to catch it right now. Um, so the, the center of the, of the circle is actually right in here. And so all of our, uh, at this site, we've got things labeled with these metal tags and then these zip ties. But so this is one, so I'm going to have you guys, um, maybe half of you do a visual survey and then the other half um, do a beat sheet survey at the same spot. And, but let me just, I'll kind of point out where all of our, our survey locations are. You can follow where I'm going and then get to a spot. So here's one. This is 8A. Straight back behind it. Right here is the tag here. Oh, okay. So this is a sugar maple. This one in the middle I was just at is a sugar maple. Uh, right here is a sugar maple. So those are two. Um, and it, once once you kind of see how two are laid out like to the center point, then you can have a sense of where to look for the other ones. Although actually this is a site where things got messed up by a falling tree. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is right there. Um, there's uh, a net here. <coughs> there's a net here which is part of a, a separate related experiment we're doing. Um, which is, uh, we're doing a bird exclosure experiment, so we're putting nets on some branches and seeing to what extent we get more bugs on places where birds have been excluded. Uh, that could be another add-on project you could do. But anyway, the, 
The actual survey location is right here. This is a spice bush. Um, what letter is that? HC. And that usually the tree species name we have written on there. So that, that. Uh, That's one. So one, two, three. There's another one I see. I saw There's it going one back all that way. way. Back here, yeah. Which is uh, another uh, sugar maple. And then the last one. And another exposure branch too, but we don't have to worry about those. The last one is going to oh. be over this way, um, which is over here, which is actually quite um, one of these scraggly saplings with not a lot of leaves, so you might have to, to lump things. So uh, maybe we'll just take kind of the five closest people who aren't holding beet sheets can go to <laughs> one of those spots that I just indicated and all five to the same spot? No, no, no. So we'll just so oh. one one each, right? Okay. So um going in and start counting out kind of a 50 leaf area so to do a real survey. And oh, oh sorry, watch the briars there. And yeah, there's one. So one of you guys you might go Back to that one in the, in the canopy gap back there. Lying in the vicinity, I wouldn't count it. I have a There's a little cricket. Clearly, about exactly where this line I'm drawing is. I'm not going to let you go. There's the ant back over there. But, um, cool. But Did you find anything web, else? Is that the, 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 the those two? Yeah. I think it's just those two. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Cool. Does that count as two centimeters? Yep. He's got some long antenna. It's just a make sure that if you are doing a beet sheet, mm -hmm. that you need to record the number of leaves that got yeah. beet. Right. That's and so that would be in the that would just go in the notes and on the the data sheet on the web that's updated it says record the number of leaves if this was a beet sheet. So for now we just have to remember yeah. to do that. So that totally counts. So if ever so. <laughs> so crick so ant cricketed spider. Mm -hmm. For the other folks that have, oh, you guys just did one. The, the cricket was, or the cricket was.